Hi, my name is Atulia Nad, and I'm at Westover School, and this is my TED Talk. Answer this truthfully. Do you have anybody in your life who's there for you at the drop of a dime? Whether it be celebrating the fact that you got a grade that you really wanted or that you possibly failed a test? Well, I do. I have a little floor mop by the name of Clover. I'm not saying this lightly when I say that he is my soulmate. I got him when I was in third grade. My father walked in with this hazard looking mutt and the second he put him on the floor, I fell in love. And from third grade to fifth grade, every single paper I wrote had to do with him. You see, he has quite the personality. Ordinary kibble doesn't cut it for him anymore. My father likes to make him special chicken with a little bit of turmeric, a little bit of pepper. He mixes in with rice. Sometimes he'll give him a nice bowl of cold, refreshing water. And he doesn't have that many dog friends. Whenever we bring him to the dog park, he'll only sniff a butt if it runs past him. And once he's done with the park, he'll let us know by walking over to us and sitting and not moving until we get the idea we should probably grab the leash. <laughs> Why am I telling you about him though? Because he is the shining example of loyalty. I went to middle school back home and he had my schedule down to clockwork. 4.30 in the morning, his eyes would be half open and he'd be kind of pawing at my door to wake me up. And until 5.30, he was at my side until I ran out the door to make it to the bus. Around 2.30, my father would always tell me that he would start nipping at his ankles to tell him, hey, you should get ready to go pick her up. But for high school, we had to make an adjustment. You see, I came here to Westover, 2,600 miles away. He didn't really understand what was going on when I packed my bags and I started crying and I had to leave him at the airport. But I think now he has a new schedule down. November 1st comes around and he can tell that something's going on, something's different in the air. November 16th comes around and everyone's bustling around a little bit more. The house is starting to get clean and his toys are being put away for some reason. <laughs> 7.30 comes around and my father calls him over to brush him and put a little bit of perfume and he realizes that something's happening and it's something that he should know. 10.30 rolls around and He's already on his way to the airport and his whole body starts wiggling like he's losing his mind. And then, and then 10.30 rolls around and his whole body is wiggling. He's losing his mind because he knows that somebody special is back within his paws. That's a story of loyalty. But to understand loyalty and why dogs are so loyal, we have to take a look at their ancestors. The Mighty Wolf. You see, according to Audrey Pavia, a dog journalist, wolves started to loiter around human beings in Southeast Asia. They would hope that maybe after the humans get a kill, they pity them and give them parts of their, pre parts of their prey. And they started to. They pitied them and gave them scraps from their table. And wolves realized, this is the perfect arrangement. Wolves started to follow humans as they migrated out of Southeast Asia. And humans started to realize that we can start breeding these wolves to meet our needs. So that's why today we have breeds as mighty as the Great Dane bred to hunt boars and just as mighty the Affenpincher bred to hunt equally great prey, rats. And this is Banana Joe. He won the Westminster Show out of the 137, he was the first Affin Fincher to do it. Just a fun fact. Let me tell you a story about loyalty. Professor Ueno was a professor of agricultural science in Tokyo University, and he's always wanted this perfect Akita dog, and he finally got him, and his name is Hachiko. You see, these two were inseparable. They'd spend all their time together. Professor Reno would walk to the train station and Hachiko would be right beside him and he'd wait there at the train station for his best friend to come home. But one day, Professor Reno didn't come home from work. He suffered a cerebral hemorrhage and passed away. Hachiko didn't know that. And he continued waiting there for him every single day until his own last breath. And if you go to Tokyo today, there is a memoriam erected in honor of their relationship, a bond so deep. This is another example of loyalty. 
This is Andy and his best friend, Bailey. Andy has been addicted to drugs for about 15 years, and one day he realized that he doesn't want to live like that anymore. When he was walking down the street, he saw some men selling Bailey, and he thought maybe this is a way out. Bailey was on Valium so that he wouldn't cry out for his mom. And he decided to rescue both of them, and they're both off drugs, and they're trying to get their lives back together. Andy says that Bailey is a heartbeat behind his side. And that's what therapy dogs, in essence, provide. Therapy dogs provide a sense of belonging to those who need it the most. Service dogs help detect symptoms before something bad were to happen so people who live, who are disabled can lead more independent lives. Canine dogs help find bad guys. Search and rescue dogs help find people so if they're lost, whether it be from accidents of wilderness or just accidents in general, we can find them. Hunting dogs, like our Great Dane and the Affin Pincher, they help find prey, flush them out, and retrieve them. But why are dogs so willing to do this? The answer may lie within their DNA. Hypersocial dogs have two gene variations, GTF2I and GTF2I RD1. Yes, a mouthful. In human beings, these two gene variations cause something called Williams syndrome, where people who have Williams syndrome have elfish facial features, cognitive disabilities, but this intense desire to love everyone. Two researchers, Bridget Von Holt and Monique Udell conducted this experiment with 18 dogs of different breeds and 10 wolves trained to be with humans. The premise of this experiment was that there was going to be a box and a treat inside. The dog or the wolf had to go to the box, open it up, and the treat was there. But each animal had to do this experiment three times. One with the human they know, one with the human they don't know, and one alone. The results? The wolves went for the treat every single time. The dogs, on the other hand, they saw a human being and they could care less about the treat. It was time to party. So Fido is trained to love us in his genetics. But what makes them so appealing to us other than the fact that they're bred to do tasks that we want? It's a little something called baby schema. Think about a dog. They have huge doe-like eyes and a really small face. Something about that just doesn't seem to add up. They remind you a lot about babies. Babies have this as well. This is why when you present a baby or a dog to mothers, they feel this instinctive care and they want to be a mom. That's why we call our dogs fur babies because they look like a baby. It's just genetic, we want to. So Fido has it in his genes. We see a dog and we're like, wow, I want to be its mom. They provide helpful tasks such as detection of symptoms or helping us hunt. But what are some of the other benefits of dogs? Dogs help provide an active lifestyle. Having a dog helps decrease levels of triglyceride, cholesterol, blood pressure, and just staring into their large doe-like eyes can help you fill with feelings of happiness from things like oxytocin, beta endorphins, things like that. So does that deal sound pretty sweet to you? The ASPCA currently reports having 3.3 million shelter dogs. That means there are 3.3 million furry friends out there just waiting for you to pick them. And when you do, my best friend and I can't wait till we can network with you. Thank you.